before the plague came in. And if you remember, President Obama, you need a magic wand. No, you don't. We need manufacturing jobs. He said you won't have any more manufacturing jobs. You need a magic wand. He was wrong about that also. My fifth promise to American workers is to bring back American jobs and factories using every tool at my disposal, including tariffs. I love properly put on tariffs because they bring unfair competitors from foreign countries to do whatever you want them to do. Countervailing duties and new trade deals based on the principle of fairness and reciprocity. And I'll be signing something very important. Watch over the next week. I think you'll be very proud of your president. I'm going to be signing something that's very important over the next probably week. And it'll have a tremendous impact on fairness and trade. As part of this commitment earlier today, I signed a proclamation that defends American industry by reimposing aluminum tariffs on Canada. Canada was taking advantage of us, as usual. And I signed it, and it imposes because the aluminum business was being decimated by Canada. Very unfair to our jobs and our great aluminum workers. Seven months ago, my administration agreed to lift those tariffs in return for a promise from the Canadian government that its aluminum industry would not flood our country with exports and kill all our aluminum jobs, which is exactly what they did. Canadian aluminum producers have broken that commitment, and the U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer has advised me that this step to reimpose tariffs is absolutely necessary to defend our aluminum industry. To be a strong nation, America must be a manufacturing nation and not be led by a bunch of fools. That means protecting our national industrial base. We have to protect our great companies and our great workers. My sixth and final promise today is to forever uphold the commitment I made from the beginning. I will always put American workers first, always. They'll always be put first. And I don't know if you're union or non-union, it doesn't matter to me. But I did one hell of a good job for the unions. You know, all the union heads are against me, but all the workers are for me, so something's right. The workers are for me. They're usually the union heads, they're wined and dined in Washington, pretty good by the Democrats. As part of this commitment, on Monday, I signed an executive order to prevent government agencies like the Tennessee Valley Authority from replacing American workers with cheap foreign labor. There's a very big utility run by a man that gets $8 million a year. Would anybody in this room like that job? $8 million? $8 million a year, right? Highest paid. He really doesn't work for me. I wouldn't pay $8 million. If you paid him, the president gets $400,000, $450,000. I give up my salary. Nobody ever says that. I might as well every once in a while say it. I believe I'm the only president to do that. And I'm saying, that's not too smart. But the Tennessee Valley Authority pays $8 million a year to the head. And after the authority laid off 20% of its American technology workforce and forced them to train their foreign replacements this week, I told the chairman of the board, you're fired. <laughs> and the firings will continue unless the layoffs are reversed and the American workers are rehired. And by the way, as I was leaving, for the great state of Ohio. Did you ever watch Biden? Where he's always saying the wrong state. It's great to be in Florida. Florida. No, it's Ohio. I've never seen a guy. I haven't done that one yet. That's a disaster. I always say, Jim Jordan, if you do that, it's over, right? You can be Winston Churchill. The speech is over. You just walk off the stage. But he does it all the time. Nobody calls him for it. I love the state of Iowa. Sir, sir, it's Idaho. It's Idaho. And the worst is when he's in, like, Indiana. <laughs> 